just gonna be easy. Post exactly. through it. Oh no. No, no. I'm Hannah, I'm the world's okayest mom, and if you didn't notice, the majority of last year, I was pregnant. And right before Christmas, I had our third son, his name is Henry, he's the sweetest little thing, and his birth definitely taught me that you can plan all you want, and things can completely derail anyway. So, here's my birth story. On Friday, last Friday, the doctor checked to see how dilated I am, which is like how far open my cervix has gotten. So on Friday, I was a one, which is pretty low, not a big deal. But then on Wednesday, I was a three, so my doctor told me to stop going into the office um, and work from home, so I've been doing that, but nothing has happened. I feel very accomplished that we got a crib. <laughs> and then his little bins. We're gonna play Go Fish. I elected to be induced, and first, I was over being pregnant. I didn't want to go past 40 weeks. Two, Henry's due date was very, very close to Christmas. I didn't want to take away Christmas from my other kids. I wanted to be able to enjoy Christmas with them and be home and not risk being in the hospital on Christmas. One day out from baby time, um, the boys are at a movie with Matt. I'm not feeling imminent labor, really. I was kind of hoping he would come out on his own, but it's just not happening. I'm gonna be induced tomorrow morning at the hospital. We have to get there at 5 a.m. I've had some like pre-labor indications, which we're gonna get really TMI up in here. <laughs> you lose this thing called your mucus plug, which is like, a lining that protects the baby from infection or like, like it kind of seals off your cervix. And then another sign that labor is coming is um, diarrhea. Never thought I'd be like excited to get diarrhea, but not gonna lie, I was kind of excited because I was like, oh, maybe it's happening, but it's just not happening. I'm really not hungry at all anymore. It's like almost one o'clock and I still haven't eaten anything and I'm not hungry. He's definitely dropped. My stomach is like pretty small. It looks flatter and I lost weight at my last doctor's appointment, which is also a sign that labor is approaching, but yet he is not coming. I definitely wanted to kind of focus on the kids for that last weekend. So we decided to not do phones or electronics. So we did some baking, we did some, you know, holiday preparation and stuff. So this is my last meal. I have been craving these spicy Korean rice cakes and crispy dumplings. Oh, I'm so excited. I am having a baby today. Monday came, I had to be at the hospital at five in the morning, so it was pitch black outside, but I wanted to make sure that I had my hair and makeup done. How lucky was I to be induced and actually have the luxury of doing my hair and makeup for labor? I'm completely shocked that I'm having this baby already. It's just very bittersweet, because not only is this the end of my last pregnancy, it's the last, Day as a family of four. Matt, what time is it? Okay. We're in the car. It was a slow start and we have to get there by 5 a.m. Yeah, I was a little late, but it's not gonna start without me. It's like a wedding, you know? I was late to my own wedding because it wasn't gonna start without me. It's the same thing for labor. You can't start it without me, so. My pregnancy was very mellow, and so I assumed the birth would be just as easy, and I was wrong. I'm headed into the hospital. It's happening. <laughs> We're here. I'm in my gown. They asked me a lot of questions. We have monitors. Oh. That's a contraction monitor. The baby heartbeat monitor, and we're gonna say goodbye to this bump. It's Hi, six Jeff. in the morning now. Yeah, it's six in the morning. She's I'm four centimeters. Four centimeters dilated. But I feel good. How do you feel? 
I'm excited. <laughs> I'm nervous, but... Yeah, I'm really nervous, too. What are you nervous for? Just because huh? you're going to be going through so much pain. Mm -hmm. I'm nervous for you. Mm -hmm. The most common way to be induced is with an IV drip of what's called Pitocin. It is synthetic oxytocin, which is the chemical that kickstarts labor. So I got an IV drip of Pitocin and put it in the side of my wrist. So I'm getting contractions, probably like four minutes apart, but they're not very strong. And it's just a waiting game. It's 7-Eleven right now and we're just waiting for things to progress. Uh, what are you doing? Are you shopping? <laughs> yeah. It's not, they're getting worse, it hurts more. And they turn the Pitocin up. I'd say like a four out of 10. But Deandra's here, she's gonna take photos. <laughs> One of the reasons why I decided to do my hair and makeup for labor was because my friend Deandra agreed to come photograph the birth. If you've seen other videos, she's popped in a lot of them because she photographs pretty much every milestone for my family and she's our good friend. So I was really happy that she was going to be there to help document this. There's one coming right now. Yep. Everything just feels really tight. And that's it. It's over. That was a contraction. Welcome. Thanks for joining my TED Talk. I'm trying to get him to come out. I think Matt was genuinely nervous. And so he was doing all of the things that I was supposed to do to like feel better and calm down with me. Well, you don't have to do this to no, you. No, I don't. You don't. Don't, you don't have to go right behind me either. Like, like the, my space, your space. <laughs> I'm still here. Nothing has changed. Just waiting. It hurts more. But I have to wait till 2.30 to get my water broken. <sighs> the contractions are starting to hurt more and they're closer together, and I keep burping every time it happens. My mom has been there for all of my births. She's a person who just kind of knows what to do in any situation. She's another mom, so like when hits the fan, she's the person I call. But in true mom fashion, what she did was when she found out Deandra was going to be at the birth as well. She brought all the fixings for like a full blown charcuterie board and set it up in my hospital room and everybody ate in front of me. Jerks eating in front of me. <laughs> yeah, it's so good, isn't it? Look at these jerks with their delicious sandwiches. You're not supposed to eat during labor. I was very jealous and I ended up doing something I wasn't supposed to do. But it truly was the best piece of cake I've ever eaten in my life. Wait, there's one coming. Yep. So as the day progressed, I was having consistent contractions and they were moderately painful, but I was not dilating at all. And it became very clear that this kid was not going anywhere until my water broke. She just broke my water. This is not something I had ever experienced before. Um, and it was very weird. Basically, the doctor has this little hook that she'll stick up there and like hook the bag of water and, and rip it open. Oh, there's fluid pouring out every time I move. It's okay. Oof. Now I'm having more intense contractions and um, it hurts. Ow. I thought that the contractions were painful before she broke my water, but I did not know pain until after she broke my water. Like everything is twisted up inside of your body and like ripped apart at once. Matt and my mom were trying to push pressure points that supposedly help with the pain. Yeah, like there's just that much pressure. For those of you who don't know what an epidural is, it's the pain management that hospitals provide during labor. My original birth plan was to get to the hospital, get hooked up to the Pitocin. I was already three centimeters dilated, so labor should not have taken very long. And 
I wanted to deliver without needing an epidural. None of that happened. <laughs> My pain is at like a 50 at this point. And I just vividly remember Matt and the nurse were having a conversation about whether or not I should get an epidural. I had waited and waited and waited and tried so hard to not ask for one. And then I just got hit with this horrible contraction. And so mid contraction, I'm literally like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, I wanna do it, yeah. Okay. Really, when you're in the thick of labor, there are no words to describe that kind of pain. It is vomit-inducing pain. I'm just tired. As I was getting the epidural, I realized there was a very good chance that it wasn't going to work because I could feel the baby's head descending as I was getting my epidural. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> My body wants to play. With each one, I kept telling myself, this is the last one you're gonna feel, Hannah. This is the last one you're gonna feel. Your epidural is gonna kick in. You're not gonna feel them anymore. And then I'd get another one, and then I'd be like, okay, that's the last one we're gonna feel. The epidural will kick in and it will work. And then I'd feel another one. Finally, after so many contractions, it dawned on me that I was about to feel everything. Oh my God. <laughs> but luckily, my doctor, you could hear her little heels clicking down the hall. She was like running in her heels. Threw on some scrubs and it was time to push. And just like that, Henry was here. He was healthy and good. They placed him on my chest. I was crying, he started crying. They're like wiping him all down and checking him out while he's on my chest. And, and I'm just looking down at my baby's face. And it's like, that's, that's who was in there all this time. And it was amazing. And that's when my epidural decided to kick in. So we stayed in recovery for 24 hours, which is the minimum you have to stay to make sure everything's stable with the baby. And then we got out of there and drove home so the boys could meet their new baby brother. You ready to go home? Okay. Wait, come here. Come here. <laughs> I really wanted to document this and show what one birth can look like for somebody, but the thing to keep in mind is it can go so many different ways. You literally never know what's going to happen. All about the common goal of keeping the baby safe and keeping the mom safe and keeping everybody healthy. And so <laughs> birth looks like so many different things for so many different people that this is just one tiny, tiny version of what it can look like. So that's all I got for today. I'm Hannah, and if you've given birth, shout it out in the comments. Tell us your birth story. And if you have any reactions or thoughts about mine, leave that in the comments as well. Now if you'll please excuse me, this guy's tired. Goonies. Oh, oh Baldi's gotta get to bed. Till next time.